All right. Good morning. Um, thanks for joining today, whether you're live uh, on LinkedIn right now or on YouTube, or if you're watching this after the fact. Uh, today, I figured it'd be kind of good to go, do a quick walk through Google Search Console. Uh, I know a lot of marketing people are very curious about their keyword rankings, their impressions on Google Search, uh, link metrics, as well as looking through potential crawl errors on their website too. Um, so today, I figured very simple. We'll just walk through Google Search Console. I'll go through a demo website I have set up um, and then answer any questions that come up, if there are any. Uh, obviously, afterwards, if you watch this again live or after the fact, if you have questions, feel free, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer anything specific, maybe to your website or any kind of weird you know, data you're seeing or things like that too that I can help with. Um, so without further ado, I'll pop into Search Console. I'll just get, I'll walk through some of the main things and then any questions that come up, feel free to leave a comment um, or you know, drop a message to me afterwards too. All right, so I'll get a little bigger here. This is Google Search Console. Um, and like many Google products, they changed over time. So the UI will change from month to month. Uh, but generally speaking, compared to a lot of Google products, um, this is a pretty simple, clean interface um, that's pretty easy to use. So the first question you might have is, what is Google Search Console? Um, so if you're not familiar with it, this is Google's platform for understanding uh, your website's metrics on their search engine. Um, so the way I like to kind of think about it is Google Analytics, which you're probably familiar with, is all the data that once someone gets to your website, you know, what are they doing on your website? Which pages are they going to? You know, what kind of devices they're on? All that kind of thing. Google Search Console is before they even get to your website, just when they're interacting with your links or your or your uh, rankings or your results on the search engine side of things, what are they seeing? So this is kind of the, the search engine, um, you know, health check essentially, it's the best way of looking at it, but they also provide some good data in here too. So you're probably used to the fact that if you're in Google analytics, you can't see all of your keyword data. You can't actually see which keywords you're ranking for, uh, which kind of, you know, leaves you blind in a lot of ways too. You, you know, you see that you're getting, you know, maybe 40% of your traffic or 60% of traffic is coming from organic search. But what does that mean? You know, what are they actually clicking on? What are they searching for? Um, so this is where Google Search Console is super helpful for getting a little bit, you know, basically a layer deeper into that search engine data. Um, so again, this is what it looks like uh, as far as the actual look and feel of it. Um, and I'll just start going through the different tabs here. Um, and just to give, you know, some context too, this is just a uh, Google Search Console data for a blog I used to run. So um, I haven't been actively publishing on it for a couple of years now, so it's probably a little out of date as far as some trending data, but you know, you get the gist of essentially what's all set up and what, what it's supposed to do. So the very first tab up here is performance. Um, this is the first thing that's teased here as well um, on the actual display. Performance is where you can actually see the data as far as what kind of clicks you're getting, what kind of keywords you're being found for, um, and the impressions over time. Uh, so you open it up here, you'll see a graph at the very top um, just some kind of like things to get used to across the top here. You can change uh, which different uh, search section that they're actually filter data for. So web, image, video, news. Um, you know, web is probably what you want to be using 90% of the time, unless you're like deep, deep, deep into the SEO world and trying to figure out optimizations for Google search for images or things like that. Then you can worry about that. But again, we'll focus on web here. Um, date last three months. So kind of like analytics, you know, what's most helpful, I think, is to pick a time frame that makes the most sense based on your goals and based on the data you're trying to um, understand. So I like to do at least 12 months for most of my kind of like basic stuff just to see trends over time. But again, you might say, hey, we just had a drop off of our data or drop off of our Google um, search rankings in the last week. I want to, you know, nail down just the last three months and get more detailed in there too. So, you know, definitely make it whatever time frame makes sense for you. So. Across the top here then, you have total clicks, total impressions. So clicks are actual clicks. Someone sees your result on a Google search um, page, they click on your individual link and go to your website. So that's a click. Impressions means that was the number of times that one of your website results showed up on a search results page, but doesn't necessarily mean that it was click. Um, so if you are on the first page of Google, but you're being maybe number seven, number eight, as far as down there on, on the hierarchy of rankings, um, if someone landed on that search page, even if you they didn't click you and you're at the bottom of that search page, that was an impression. Um, so that kind of gives you a good gist of like the general reach of your, your organic search. And then clicks is the actual performance as far as people going to your website, potentially entering your sales funnel. 
Um, average click-through rate. So this is a uh, variation of that. So uh, click-through rate is the percent of people that actually click on your result after seeing it. So this is, you know, just it's all part of the same math equation, essentially, as far as clicks and impressions go. And then average position. So that shows your average position on a Google search over time. Um, and this is helpful um, as we'll dive a little bit deeper in here when we narrow down to specific keywords. It's not as helpful for just all keywords because right now, as a basic level, when you just go into the performance tab and see all clicks, all impressions, no filters, it's saying for anything you ever ranked for, any keyword, any key phrase ever, here's the, the total data for it. So, you know, average position, you might have some weird, weird key phrase someone typed, but somehow your website ranked for it. So now you're ranked number 45 in there or something. So that's not a very helpful uh, metric on its own, but you'll see here in a second when we actually filter in a little bit deep, a little deeper into it, it's actually helpful to look at it too. Um, so other things here. So again, you can see the graphs over time. Generally speaking, um, as as these little lines go up, that means you're getting more clicks, more impressions, and probably more you know performance on your website too. So you can see trends over time. Um, and again, this is kind of fun for me just from a blogging standpoint because I stopped blogging last September-ish time frame. So you look at that and you can see here, like it was kind of going, 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 even starting to go up a little bit. And then I stopped in September and now it's been kind of treading water, if not going down a little bit too. So just to kind of make a note about SEO in general, this is a good example of like the more regularly you publish articles or content on your website, the better for your SEO too. So just kind of side note there. You scroll down here though, this is where it starts getting interesting. So again, this is all data right now. So right now it's showing me, these are my top queries. So the last 12 months, here are the keywords I was found for. And right now it's a, it's descending by number of clicks. Um, so again, this is, a, this is the blog I did. It was about simple living. So it's kind of like a lifestyle type blog. So. Um, follow through on commitments, follow through on commitments in 50 words, how to want less. It's not about how much you earn, but how much you save. So you can see these are all the keywords that I was being found for and getting clicks for. Um, so in the last 12 months, I had 232 clicks just on this follow through on commitments phrase. I had 3,231 impressions. Um, so again, that's the number of people that saw me as a link on that website. But up here, what we can do is actually click on this average position. So again, it doesn't mean much up here, but when you scroll down here, that adds that as another column for you to dissect that data on a keyword by keyword basis. So now it's getting more interesting, right? So now we can see here that on average, my website ranked at in position 3.6 in between the third and fourth position. And obviously in the real world of Google search, you can't be a, a fraction of a, of a ranking. Um, but this is an aggregate, right? So this is over 12 months. What was our ranking? Average of 3.6. Number two here, or sorry, the second one here, I was ranked number two. How to want less, which is obviously a very, very competitive keyword. Um, there's a lot of people that are trying to go after that keyword. Uh, I was ranked number 10 over time or throughout that that 12 month period. Another thing that's cool here, um, which you'll probably hear mentioned again a little bit too, is the impressions give you a good idea of the volume for a keyword search. So just to give some context here, this number two keyword, follow through on commitments in 50 words, I got 223 clicks in the last 12 months. I got 89 clicks in the last 12 months for this how to want less keyword. But if you look at the impression difference here, there was 578 impressions. That means, you know, in that last 12 month period, it's not perfect data because Google's a little bit obfuscated as far as how they give this data, but 578 searches were done that showed that result but 4,554 searches were done for how to want less. So if I was gonna put on my you know, SEO marketing hat, as far as like lead gen goes, I would say, I need to optimize the more I can for that how to want less because there's tons and tons of search traffic that's going there. And if I was able to move from the average of 10.3 to an average of 5.6 or you know 4.2, or I was a number one would be awesome. The more you move up on that hierarchy, as far as rankings go in a higher position, that's a very, very, high volume, high impression keyword or key phrase. Um, so that's a good opportunity for SEO. So when you're inside of your um, your search console for your website, that's something I'd look for. It's something that maybe like, you know, you're, it's, not num it's not your number one or even number five, top five number of clicks, but it's a high impression and you're already ranking top 10, maybe even top 20, right? You might be able to go back to your website, add some more links in there, optimize the headers, optimize title tags, meta descriptions, add some imagery. Um, just to kind of bump up, again, even the small movement up with a high impression, high volume keyword will actually help a lot with the number of clicks in your website too. Um, so again, this is this is kind of the general um, 
look and feel of it. Other things to kind of note as far as on this page, you can export here too. So you press the export button. You can go into Google Sheets, uh, download Excel or SDSV. So I do this often when, work, when working with clients, but just trying to see a general, you know, what are my top keywords? What am I being found for? That kind of thing. You can go in here, um, go to queries and then pick your time frame and then export it. And you can see your current rankings, impressions and clicks and all that kind of stuff too. Um, other things on this performance tab. So we saw here queries and you can go down and, you know, again, it, it goes nearly endless. If you've had a website for a while, like you can go down and there's this weird, weird things, <laughs> you know, living with less possessions. I got one click in the last 12 months there. Um, li life simplicity meaning I got one click for. So it, it literally never ends once you get down and there's, there's tons of things that I got zero clicks for. Um, but I got impressions for, right. Cause I ranked, you know, top 60 for simple eat. Um, so I got 85 impressions there, but obviously no one ended up clicking into it. Um, so um, again, that's just kind of a quick information there. Other things to look at besides queries is you can do pages too. So you can see what are my top pages. Usually it aligns with your top um, top queries because your know, top queries are going to your top pages, but not always. Um, and that's one thing too, again, from depending on your SEO goals and what you're trying to do with, with your um, general digital marketing, you might be trying to optimize a specific page and not a specific query. Um, so this is a good way to see how certain pages are performing. So you can just see here, this is the actual URL. Um, you can open a new tab here. This is actually one for you guys on, on uh, stream right now. But you can go through and you can actually see which page you're looking at here too. Again, same exact metrics, clicks, impressions, data, on a row position. The position though is an aggregate of all of the queries you're being found for that are sending you to that individual page. So just kind of want to put that in your head as far as how that's set up. Um, other things, again, depending on your, on your digital marketing goals, it might make sense for you. You can see how you're ranking different countries. So if you sell nationally or internationally, I mean, um, you might want to see how you're performing across different localizations, devices. This is important, um, especially if you're looking at different browser behavior. So if your website has poor mobile optimization, you might want to say, okay, how is that affecting my website's performance? Um, and Google does do separate indexes, one for desktop and one for mobile. So if you have a poor website design and development for mobile devices, um, you're going to be affected here for your actual mobile organic search performance too. Um, search search experience tells you, or search appearance tells you how you're showing up on that search results page. Um, there's different weird ways Google displays uh information on the Google search page. You've probably seen some of that different rich content that they display sometimes too. So that'll show up here too. And then dates, it gives, literally gives you a day by day, number of clicks, number of impressions. So this is the kind of stuff, again, you can get that from Google Analytics. You can see the number of clicks you got onto your website from organic search on a day by day basis. But this just gives you a little bit more information because it gives you clicks, impressions, and position versus just clicks is all you get in Google Analytics. All right, so other things that you can do within this performance tab, because I think performance tab is probably the most exciting for most marketing people because it's where you can actually see your performance and how you're doing from a, a Google search standpoint. Um, so other things you can do here, you can do comparisons. Um, so we did filter here last 12 months, but you can also compare data. So you can say last month versus the previous three months. This is again, this is a really great way. I'm gonna get rid of position, that's not helpful here. Actually, let's just do clicks. Um, so this gives you an idea of how you're doing over time, which is really good to look at as far as like, hey, I noticed that our traffic dropped off over time. Let's try and dive in and figure out what's going on and what the changes were. Um, let's go back to queries here. Um, <clears throat> this is a great way if you had your Google search traffic drop off to see why did it drop off. Um, and I've seen this often with clients before that maybe they have branded keywords. So if you search for your brand, that data didn't drop off. You've, you've gotten consistent clicks and consistent impressions from there, but you don't know what keywords am I you know, losing ranking on. This is a great way to do that. So again, let's just say that in the last three months, I noticed, oh no, like, you know, my website traffic's going down. What's going on here? I can go back and look here and say, okay, this follow through on commitments, I got 23 less clicks in the last 90 days and in the previous 90 days. So that might be a good spot. Again, I don't actually care because this isn't, isn't something I'm trying to optimize for. But if I cared about this, this was like a product page or a services page that was really important to me, I would say, I need to go back and look, did I change content? Did I change links? Did I do something that would affect my keyword query of follow through on commitments so I can go back to my website and change again? Um, or vice versa, like you can see here, um, the last 30 days or 90 days, I mean, um, I got 27 more clicks for the how to want less. So maybe, you know, I didn't, but let's just say I, I you know, 
earlier this year, back in January, I decided that I wanted to go back and optimize a website for the search term, how to want less. This would tell me that, hey, you're doing a great job of it. You're performing better. You know, life is good kind of thing. So I like this compare or function just because it really helps you drive down trends and trying to analyze what happened within trends. Because again, if you go back to um, just your standard data, show everything, show all queries, just this time period, um, it doesn't really tell you too much. It can tell you big picture, number of traffic or number of clicks you're getting over time, but it doesn't give you much in-depth information as far as how you're performing for specific keywords or what things might be affecting keywords too. Um, so that's one thing I like to do is that compare function. Um, the other thing to do too, is you can click on individual keyword queries and filter down and just show performance for individual queries. Um, so again, you might find this with your business, you, but you probably have, I'm guessing, one to five keywords or key phrases that are really important for you to be found for, for your business. So what I recommend is to find them on this page, click on them, and you can track them over time. So right now, you can see here up top the filters, uh, search type is web, date is last 12 months. The query, though, is just how to want less, which again, this would be a huge keyword for a simple living blog. So that would be something maybe you want to optimize for over time, right? But now I can see, now I just have clicks here, I'll see impressions too. Um, so for whatever reason, I started ranking really, really well uh, in like late February of this year for this page. So something strange happened there. I got a bunch of clicks and life moved on. So over time, though, it wasn't as much. So this, again, this is something strange. And this just goes to show how Google's algorithm can just do weird things sometimes and how looking at data trends over time is more important than, you know, specific data points. Um, but Again, you can see here, this is a great way to dissect individual queries and see how you're doing there too. You can do the same thing with position too. Um, so you can see here over time position wise, and it goes, it's inverse. So the higher up the position, the, the lower the number of positions. So, you know, number one is way up top and it goes lower from there. Um, so you can see here over time, I've always ranked, you know, between five and seven, five and eight ish, but kind of trending down over time. Um, and then more recently, it's kind of really nosedived. So if this was a really important keyword for me uh, or key phrase of how to want less, I'd be very alarmed right now saying, hey, like starting back in February after this giant spike of traffic all of a sudden, I'm guessing there's probably some book or, you know, Good Morning America article or like segment of how to want less. And that's probably like a lot of search traffic happened that one day. And all of a sudden, so if you're looking here, like what I'm seeing here is like, my position didn't change much, but the volume increased drastically for that time period. So there's probably some sort of thing that happened then too, um, which again, this is all part of the SEO world of like, there's a technical side of it, there's content side of it. And there's just like the general, just human behavior of what's going on in the world, as well as Google changes too, you know, their algorithm changes as well. Um, so long story short, this is a great way to dive into individual queries. You can click on them. You can track a keyword ranking over time. Let's just do one more for the sake of checking it out. Um, here's follow through on commitments. So you can see the opposite trends happening here, actually, that my ranking, this orange line here is slowly getting higher. So I've always been top five-ish, but if you scroll up here, I'm moving towards that number three, number two position. So again, that'd be, that'd be a good thing if I'm trying to be found for that. Um, that'd be something I'd be happy about. So again, I recommend you go back to your website, your data and say, okay, what are the main keywords you wanna be found for? And then try and figure out trends as far as positioning goes there too. Um, so what else is on this page? I think that's kind of the main gist of things. Um, close this out quick. There we go. All right, cool. So that's performance. Again, there's a lot of good data in there and you can really eat that up. You can find a lot of trends in there. I like to do that for general, how are we performing? And then a lot of times with clients too, if they notice a drop off on certain keywords, this is a spot to go do some comparisons, do some trend analysis and try and figure out, okay, here's what we know happened as far as website changes we made or marketing changes we made. Um, but then what other factors might be at play here and trying to dissect that data. So that's the performance section. Um, this URL inspection, well, can I take a step back here? You know, again, search console is all about trying to figure out how Google is viewing your website on the search engine side of things. So it's your performance on the actual search results page, but it's also a look into how Google's robots or Google's crawlers are seeing your website. So, um, you know, from the SEO perspective or just how search engines work in general, Google and, and Bing and Yahoo, all of them have these little robots called crawlers that go onto your website, they crawl all the content and they index it. What Search Console lets you do is see how you're performing, not just on that search results page, but also see how those crawlers are viewing your website. So they can say, okay, are they able to read all the data? Are there errors in the mobile experience? Are there errors in other, you know, speed and all that kind of thing too? 
Um, so it's a great way to understand, like, not only how are you performing from a ranking standpoint, but how are you performing, like, technically speaking, from a, a Google search standpoint, too. Um, so it's a URL inspection thing. Basically, any website or any page on your website, you can copy and paste a URL up into this bar up here. Um, and then you can double check that Google's able to actually crawl it. So if there's an error on that page, if you have like a redirect error or some other kind of error, like a server error, um, it'll show that when you type it in there too. So that's, that's, that's more of a diagnostic tool from like a development standpoint um, or SEO standpoint. So that's what that is. Um, this next section here is the index um, that tells you basically how many of your pages and elements are being actually indexed, again, by that crawler on your website. So if you have errors here, they'll show up. Um, again, by errors, it means like, you know, some sort of server error or redirect error or things like that too. So if you have something in here, you want to double check that you fix it, remedy it, work with your web developer, or maybe something you can fix on your own just by content set, set, or from a content perspective too, um, go through and fix it. You can see here on my website, everything's valid. So it's got 148 pages that it has indexed on the website. Um, excluded. Um, so if you've excluded down here, a lot of times these are pages on your website that you don't want Google to index. So maybe it's like admin pages or server resources, things like that too. Um, more often than not, these are things that are set up by your web developer that are specific to your you know, CMS build or that kind of thing too. So you don't have to worry about them. Um, but sometimes you might accidentally exclude some real content that you want to have indexed. So this is a good spot to double check that you don't have anything that's like you know, I want that to be indexed, but somehow because of the way the configuration files are set up or server permissions, things like that too, uh, that data is not being collected accurately. Um, site map. So this is your site map. This is what tells Google where to find the content. Um, most modern content management systems, you know, like WordPress, Drupal, um, Magento, all those major uh, content management systems, a lot of times they generate sitemaps on their own. Um, so you just want to make sure you have some sort of sitemap in there. Um, again, you can see mine here is mywebsite.com slash sitemap underscore index index.xml. Um, and you can see here, here's what's actually the, the subcategories of that sitemap. And again, you can see here the status is success, which, is, which just means that Google search engine robot was able to find it, crawl it, and everything was good. Um, removals. So you can request content get removed. This is more of a manual action. Um, you know, it's maybe some sort of content got indexed that wasn't supposed to, but you still want it live, but you don't want it indexed. So you're gonna wanna go back and add that to your configuration file to not have Google's robot index it. But in the meantime, you can go in here and request to not get indexed too. So just kind of a random note there. Um, the other big thing people use often is this experience section. Um, so this is all part of Google's new core web vitals experience, which is basically saying, you know, what's important for SEO is content, links, crawlability, um, but also the user experience. So if someone on Google clicks on your website, they go to your website, the page load is long or the mobile experience is bad, that reflects poorly back on Google, right? Because you go to Google to find information. And if the websites that Google sending you to are poor user experience, that's not good for the end user too. So starting last May, I think it was, Google, or May, May of 2021, for depending on when you're watching this video, um, Google started ranking these page experience things much higher. So they look at accessibility, uh, design functions, and page load speed a lot higher than they used to. And that impacts your rankings too. So uh, in Google Search Console, you can now see any issues you have from Google standpoint, from a user experience. Um, so page experience, this tells you from a mobile stamp standpoint, no, they don't have core web vital data, data in here. Mobile usability is good. That means my, my website, all the pages that crawled are mobile friendly. So that's great. Um, HTTPS, that means all the data that's on my website is end to end encrypted, uh, which again, Google's looking for higher security for their users. So this is a request they had, so that happens too. Um, desktop, you can see how it's doing. And then again, not much in there too. <clears throat> Core Web Vitals, this will tell you based on, this is mostly based on page speed. Um, so there's a couple of different metrics they measure. The first metric they measure is the first amount of data people see. So when you when you search your website, how long does it take for some content to show up? Um, then how long does it take for all the content to show up? And then how long does it take for all the content and, and all the formatting and all the styling to show up too? So it's kind of different layers of speed that they measure. Um, and this tracks this over time. So you can see here right now on the website, I don't have any issues currently, um, but I have had some in the past. Um, and this goes back to like this Google search engine and algorithms in general. Um, 
you know, there, there's it kind of comes and goes. So if you have a big website with a lot going on, you might see some pages show up as like a speed error one day. And then five days later, Google crawls your website again and there's no more error again too. So take everything in this Google Web Vitals and speed side of things with a little bit of a grain of salt and don't freak out and call your web designer or web developer the next day and say, hey, my website's broken, it's not working or the page load is, is slow. Um, wait for some trends. Again, all, everything in my mind with SEO and Google search really comes back to looking for trends and not responding after some sort of like one-time incident. But if it's like a one-time thing that happens again and again and again, it's no longer a one-time thing anymore, that's when you want to investigate. You want to see what happened and what's going on and try and remedy the problem too. Uh, again, so not too much exciting things to see in here. You can open supports. It gives you more detail. So if you had an error in here, you could click on it. It'll actually show you the type of error it is. And you can go to that web, web page and try and fix it. And then, you know, re-index re that page again and see if it's fixed again too. And then uh, mobile usability, same thing. If you had mobile usability issues, so like the screen size didn't automatically adapt or buttons were too close together. So if someone had a fat thumb, they couldn't click on buttons, all of that kind of stuff that would show up here. Um, and again, Google does a pretty good job of at least saying to you, here's the, here's the page that had the error. Here's the status telling you what the error was. And then here's the URL. So you can go back and diagnose it and fix it on your end of things too. And then last but not least, as far as things, I just wanted to kind of quickly show, um, on Search Console, and if there are any questions, I can answer those too, is a link section. So the way that Google indexes the world and indexes the websites across the world is by links. So um, inbound links coming to your website tell Google that you're an authority on a subject. So um, if some the New York Times wrote an article about simple living or how to want less or whatever it might be, and they linked back to my blog, that would be a great inbound link that would send me a good SEO authority. Vice versa, you can link out to other websites um, and kind of send data that way. But when Google's crawlers are going across the internet, that's literally how they find new websites. So they're trying to find links and they go to that website, they crawl that website, they find links, they go to the next website. So it's kind of this big, big web um, that ends up being called this page authority side of things. Um, there's SEO tools out there that gives you a lot more in-depth information as far as links go. Um, but at least in Search Console, it gives you a general idea of like, here's what Google's seen from a link standpoint. Um, so top external links, this will tell you which pages on your website have the most number of links coming back into them. So my homepage is number one, and then number two, pardon my language, but uh, 10 ways to stop buying shit you don't need, um, then marginal utility. So these are typically other blogs, or other bloggers that link back to my blog. Um, so these are, these are top link pages. Again, it's kind of cool to see, you know, you can see number of clicks and impressions on analytics or on Google Analytics of what your top pages are, but this is actually telling you what are the top pages as far as other websites linking to those pages too. Um, internal links. So Google looks at which pages on your website link to each other, um, which gives them an idea of like, from your perspective, as someone who runs a website, what are the top pages or what are the pages that you're sending people back to most often? Um, so typically about page, archive page, homepage. So again, you can kind of see some pretty, some commonalities. You'll probably see the same thing on your website too, your homepage, about page, contact page. Um, pages where you want people to go often as part of that user experience will often show up on that internal links page too. Um, top linking sites will tell you uh, which websites from a domain perspective link to the most times. So Reddit, um, this blog becoming minimalist, site like, medium, simplicity voices. So those are kind of my, my biggest fans as far as like domains go linking back to my website. And then simple living text is kind of cool. Or sorry, <laughs> text. The top linking text is pretty cool too. Um, this will tell you as far as the actual link goes, you know, what people are clicking on, what does that button text say, or what does that link text say? Because Google uses that too when they're looking at keyword relevancy, you know, if you, if every website link that said click here, that wouldn't mean much to Google. Cause basically you know, that, that, that tells Google's robots that people are sending you uh, to your web, people are, are getting sent to your website with the connotation of click here. But if people are being sent to your website with simple living daily, navigate to go now, it's probably a blog is my guess, uh, simple living daily. This is all contextual information that Google then sees as part of those inbound links that helps them understand what your website's about and what kind of authority to give you on certain topics too. So that's why it's actually pretty important to have good link text as well as the links themselves too. Um, and I think that's it. You know, there's other small things in here too. There's a lot more information you could dive in and get out of Google Search Console um, if you dive a little bit deeper into it. But generally speaking, that's how I use it. Um, that's kind of how I start things with clients as far as looking through just some overview information, some trend and potential um, remedy of fixes from a usability standpoint with those functions there. 
Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll kind of pause for a second. If there's any questions. Um, otherwise, uh, again, I appreciate you joining me this morning, or if you're watching this later on, I appreciate me joining whenever you joined me. Um, feel free to message me on LinkedIn or on YouTube or shoot me an email. I'll go to my website and contact me there too. I'd be happy to dive into your specific website or answer any questions um, specific for your website too. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it and have a good day.